haven't seen Nelson in a while. I just happen to come in off the street. Oh, I wonder if there's a reading tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, step right up. See the black poet. No Nelson since what, 95? Don't miss this show for a low price. Privacy and sorrow. See the black poet. And I just wanted to be here to hear him one more time. Authentic revolutionary mad at white folks. I'm off tomorrow to the wilds of Minnesota. Probably no black people, but <laughs> I've never seen it. See the black poet from childhood, neglect to present, promiscuity. And I don't even know who Nelson is. <laughs> you didn't I'm... say that last night. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all get really Like cool. I say. I promise satisfying entertainment. I'm here primarily because I heard that there was going to be a party with some alcohol. <laughs> The workshop is experiencing an irreparable loss. Who asked me? I'm here to support Nelson because, you know, I've known him since I've been in the workshop and he's a nice guy and I love his poetry. Tonight, everyone else besides me will be brief um, so that we can bask in the words, the thoughts, the emotions, the ideas, the conceptions, and the creative talents. You know, I also never in the He wants so much from me. <laughs> Solutions to his dilemmas, the poems of his life. I just pump blood, and I do a damn good job. <laughs> Besides, what's he offering me? I'd like less cholesterol <laughs> and salt. What do I get? Fast food hamburgers with heavy mayonnaise. No thank you. No one knows the work of driving blood all the way down there to his feet when he runs behind some new pack of warm muscles <laughs> running faster, nor the serious pumping involved in making sure the fingers grip the pen and maneuver it across the puddle's page. Damn his extremities. They always give me the most trouble. And I'm not just talking about changing my beat to match his tempos. I could have an attack, but like fingerprints, I've got something to prove. No matter what myth he believes, I will not, I cannot break. Mm. <laughs> oh, Nelson. And you know, when I first met Nelson, and I think I've already, Nelson and I talked about this, I thought, he doesn't like me. How can somebody bright as bright and <laughs> as intelligent as that not like me? <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, but but it really wasn't about that. And and I actually he actually proved that to me by showing up at my party <laughs> and dropping it like it was hot. At my <laughs> <party>. <laughs> That's the truth. And um, and anyway, ever since then I really just admired Nelson. And every time I hear Nelson's work. I'm just in awe. Song for you. <laughs> Suddenly, the neighbor's stereo blares music through the vibrating wall. They've turned up the volume to drown the sound of him yelling, parasite, and slapping me hard on my mouth. He's stuffed my pile of clothes in a black garbage bag and tossed it near the front door like trash. It's my turn to dump. He wants me to climb in the garbage and take it out of his house, two-bedroom apartment where, for the past two months, I've slept and eaten regular meals. I remain silent about what I've done wrong now. Like the missing money or the man he caught me kissing, it doesn't matter because I don't love him. The tears aren't working, so I wipe my <laughs> eyes. Then, fingering the bottom of my empty pockets, take my only chance against the cold wind beating the window. I never knew Natalie Cole recorded this song. I stutter every word and yes, he hesitates because I make him feel like some kind of good daddy and I show lots of potential. He'd like to lift me from my humble beginnings, educate me, make me better. In the moment that he scratches his head where it's balding and remembers no one else will listen to hours of his talk about old R&B I thank God for the couple next door who must get sick of hearing me fuck him and tired of him putting me out every 10 days. I imagine Donny Hathaway's immaculate voice in an awful scream before he crashed. Concrete, I refuse to make my pillow tonight. My mother was right. 
the devil only comes after good people and good singers. In a reflection from the coffee table, I notice and ignore something snake-like behind my eyes. So before he can think of Natalie high and helpless as the clouds her son reached for while she watched the boy drowning, I pull him into my lips, my hand cupping the back of his head, the best fool I'll ever have, all his fears true. Mm. <laughs> he represented an alternative and at the same time represented the workshop. I always feel bad for black people that want to write in other places. I mean, I mean <laughs> no, for real. Like, you know, I'm like, God, yeah, I got extra love. I'm so blessed. Just as we try, and I think successfully so, to create a safe space where women feel a certain sense of solidarity and safety in terms of expressing themselves. We want to create a safe space for everybody. And very often, those of us who live on the periphery, by whether by choice or by chance, don't feel safe in, in many of these workshops, particularly when they're called black workshops. <laughs> like father. My father's embrace is tighter now that he knows he is not the only man in my life. He whispers, remember when, and I love you, and holds my hand, hungry for a discussion of Bible scriptures over breakfast. He pours cups of coffee, but I can't stop spilling. My father's embrace is firm and warm now that he knows. He begs forgiveness for anything he may have done to make me turn to abomination as he watches my eggs scrambled soft. Yoke runs all over the plate. A rubber band binds the morning paper. My father's embrace tightens, grits, stiffen. I hug back like a little boy gripping to prove his handshake. Daddy squeezes me close, but I cannot feel his heartbeat, and he cannot hear mine. There is too much flesh between us, two men in love. I had never seen that side of you. <laughs> I appreciate Nelson as one of the hardest working writers that I know. He'll represent us. So I'm hoping he'll do uh, the Kermit poem. Because <laughs> that's my favorite. This is the last poem. And I'm dedicating this poem to Paulette. Letter to Kermit from the Swamp. <laughs> Miss you something desperate, frog. <laughs> Gators going mad round here. I swallowed both the rivet twins whole just last week. We fear for the tadpoles, their future. Here you're doing well, though, decked in sweet tuxedos and top hats, all your wants removed. They say the blondes got you in tap shoes, singing the blues like show tunes with home stage next to you, done up in sequins and tiaras, a real pretty pink trophy. Never did see why you ran off with her. Snooty as she is, not to mention snouty. But I'm happy for you, long as you're happy. Still, it'd be nice if you'd visit home sometime. Maybe we could sing together the way we used to. Your crooning always kept the gators calm. So don't forget us on the lily pads, frog. It still ain't easy being green. Your brother, Kermel. <laughs> Nomo could not have lived up to being the Nomo Literary Society without Heather and Nelson. I don't care how many, you know, uh, poets came through. We always need to be able to say that we are a space where everybody who wants to deal with the truth can come in and do so. <laughs> everybody say. I shake. I shake.